All right, guys. Today we're going to talk about transmitters and receivers. We're not going to get into the uh, schematics. We're not going to get into uh, what exactly is going on. We're going to give you the absolute basics here. Because that's all that really matters for what you're going to use them for. Essentially what a transmitter does is it transmits a frequency uh, called a carrier frequency. And on, along that carrier frequency what it does is it can it can carry um, an, an, inf an information signal, where it be an audio signal or a, a, a video signal, and that's it's modulated. So the modulation means that it's sent at a much higher frequency than really than it really is. Uh, at the receiver, it receives the receiver is, is tuned so that it only accepts that carrier frequency. And it demodulates or takes away the carrier frequency and takes the gets the original information and outputs that original information. So as you can see here, here's the transmitter transmitting the information to the receiver. Receiver um, uh, takes that information and it will uh, what it will do is it will filter out all other signals and take that one signal in, and you can use that signal to do a whole bunch of things. Here we're just going to turn things on and off because that's all we really care about right now. We're not going to transmit uh, video or audio or anything like that. We're just going to show you how to do some cool stuff. So what you got to know is at the receiver right here, uh, we have to make sure that there's a power supply for actually both the transmitter and the receiver. We've got that here. Just a battery supply for a, a small one, say out of a an RC car. Um, and here's our load, our load resistance, our circuit. So, um, what we need to do, if we're going to take apart an RC car uh, transmitter receiver, what we have to do is we're going to have to actually disconnect the load circuit that the uh, receiver is hooked up to, say, in an RC, uh, in an RC circuit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you what I mean. So here we've got our transmitter, and here we've got our receiver circuit. Our receiver circuit is actually right here. It comes with its own little rechargeable battery supply in this case. Not all of them do. And this happens to be hooked up to a little motor. So if I turn on my receiver, it's programmed to, to look pretty cool and give off warning lights that the receiver is actually on. So let's turn on our transmitter. Now the motor will go off because I'm sending out a frequency that the receiver is tuned to respond to. So what I just talked about is we don't want this motor there. Say we want something else. We're actually going to have to make up a circuit that's compatible with this. So the first thing you got to do is you got to measure the the battery supply. This happens to be about 3.5 volts. I'm going to what I want to do is I want to literally turn off everything. I want to take this motor and I want to remove it. I've successfully removed the motor. There's a red wire and a black wire connected to it. Red normally means positive vo DC voltage and black normally means negative or ground. Alright, so now we've removed the motor from our signal line. We have to basically change a little circuit into a big, you have to add a circuit to make this compatible with other things so we can drive higher loads at higher voltages and higher currents. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole other circuit, a very small one, and we're going to uh, we're going to attach it to a breadboard. First things first, we're going to worry about our power supply. We'll take out our trusty 7805 5-volt regulator. 
uh, decouple the 5 volt output to ground just to eliminate any, help, help eliminate any noise we're going to hook the input to a 9 volt battery and this is going to be for our receiver circuit keep in mind our transmitter has its own independent battery so this is an LM386 operational amplifier I've got the pinouts here on how you're supposed to hook it up I'll explain it to you um, this is where our motor used to be. We're going to red, connect our red wire right here. We're going to connect our ground wire to all to the same rail as all of our other grounds. As you can see on the power supply. If you'd seen any other videos, you'll understand what I mean. I'm not going to get into this because this is just a little bit more advanced. And we're going to put a 10k resistor here. Not that it's necessary, but we're going to we're going to add in a bleeder there just for safety purposes. Uh, since these two leads are basically connected essentially they're considered to be virtual ground this isn't too much of an issue but I like to put them there just for uh, just to bleed off any current that's left here after I've turned the circuit off not that there necessarily will be any but as I said just for the sake of doing it now if you don't know how a comparator works I suggest watching my video on op amps but I'll give you a quick overview of what's going on here we've always got a constant voltage at our negative line that actually looks like a positive. I should actually erase that. But for the meantime, number, pin number two is our negative input. Pin number three is our positive in, input. So we've always got a voltage at our negative input right here because we're, we've got the wiper of a potentiometer connected between VCC, which of course, of course, five volts, and our ground line. So we've got a voltage divider here. So the first thing we have to do before hooking the circuit up is we have to measure our signal line when it's being activated and I've measured this already and how you do this is you put your black probe of your multimeter here set it to voltage your red probe here you turn on your receiver and your transmitter and you activate the uh, what wouldn't be the motor and you'll measure about 2.5 I here we I measured about 2.5 volts so what we have to do is we have to come we have to um, calibrate our potentiometer to offer about two point well about two volts two volts will be fine so there's always two volts along this line the negative so only when you activate the, tra the, the transmitter and you, you activate the signal line will the voltage here be higher than the voltage here so when the voltage here is higher than the voltage here when the voltage at the negative is, is higher than the voltage of the positive the output will be low will be zero volts but when the voltage at the positive is higher than the positive at the negative, i.e. when you activate the, the receiver line, the, the signal line, the output goes high. Now the 386, uh, it's a low voltage power amplifier. And what that means is the fact that we can drive, we can drive very, we can drive low, very nice loads at the output of this, meaning we can source a lot of current course we need to make sure that our power supply can su supply a lot of current but that's the wonderful thing about this we can change a 2.5 volt signal here to 5 volts or we can even put 9 volts for VCC if we really want to I stick to 5 volts because 5 volts is good for digital anyway so as soon as we activate the signal line we're going to change the 2.5 volts here low current to substantially high current here at about 5 volts or 4.8 volts roughly of course we're going to connect pins 6 to VCC to our 5 volt line, pin 4 to ground, and these are our gain lines. Pins 1 and 8 should be connected together for maximum gain. So as soon as the voltage at the positive becomes higher than the voltage at the negative, we're going to get saturation at the output. Alright, so here's our circuit. I've got my receiver hooked up, my ground's connected to my ground to my circuit. Uh, the red wire from the motor connected to the positive input of the operational amplifier. I know it's kind of hard to see in this light. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Uh, we've got our negative input of our operational amplifier tied to the wiper of our potentiometer, our variable resistor. I chose not to employ the uh, 7805 for this because all I'm doing is driving an LED with an in series with a current limiting resistor. So first things we've got to do is 
let's turn on our circuit. Let's put our our power supply in our battery. Nine volts. Okay, power applied. Second thing, turn on our receiver. Third thing, turn on our transmitter. All right. LED isn't very bright because uh, I'm using a really high current limiting resistor. I wonder. Okay, just for the sake of showing you, getting a better view, I might burn out the, the LED this way. But let's give it a try. Let's bypass the current limiting resistor and see if we can get this brighter. There we go. And that, you can drive TTL, you can drive digital circuits, you can drive just about anything. Now, I've got kits on my eBay store, so have a look around and see if there's anything you'd like. You can learn a lot from my kits, a lot from my lessons, and a heck of a lot from my offered labs. The labs are better value because they give you ideas, uh, they give you exa more examples than the lessons, but... If you're just looking for the, the minor tidbits, then go for the lessons because they're definitely worth it too. They're practical, but there you go. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.